Ah yeah, what's up? I'm Ethan, your Real Life English Fluency Coach. And it's really crazy for me to think that I have been actively helping learners from around the world to improve their English for over 10 years. Now during this time, I have created content for millions of learners just like you. I have communicated personally with thousands of you. And I've been listening to your biggest frustrations when it comes to learning English. So during this time, between my experience teaching and actually learning six different languages myself. Shalom, akore. Um... I've identified some key secrets that I've seen truly help people go beyond the classroom and really learn the skills that they need to communicate in English successfully. So in this video, we will be covering the 10 lessons that I have learned in 10 years of teaching. So the purpose of this video is to give you a roadmap that is going to help you learn to communicate in English successfully while also avoiding some of the traps that learners often fall into. That way, you can get to speaking English confidently a lot faster. But before we get started with today's lesson, I want to let you know that if you are new here, every week we make lessons that help you to stop being a lost and insecure English learner and become a confident and successful English speaker. Does that sound like what you want for your English? Then join our community of over 300,000 people who are doing just this by hitting that subscribe button and the bell down below, and that way you won't miss a single new lesson. So don't just learn English, live it. So this means that you make learning English an enjoyable part of your everyday life. So this is doing the things that you already enjoy doing in your mother tongue, but doing them in English. So to give you some examples that you're probably already doing, maybe watching a TV series, but it doesn't have to be just consuming media. It could be, for example, if you love cooking, maybe you look up a recipe from the United States or from the UK or just one that's in English that you love from your home country and following that. Or maybe for example, you just love swimming. So you could join a forum online of swimmers and communicate in English with them, make friends from different places who have that same hobby that you do. Or maybe you could just consume videos that can help you to improve on your technique. Now, as you become more advanced, something that's really important is that you start to consume more and more challenging content in the language. A good way to do this too could be if you are working in a certain area to start learning the English that you need to communicate with people about that. And that could even help you to get a promotion or to get a better job. So the big thing here is to stop studying English like a school subject, like math or science, and start living it out in your everyday life. This is really creating a bilingual lifestyle for yourself where you are getting the maximum exposure every single day to the English language through consuming different things that you enjoy. So be creative, have fun with it, and let's move on to the next lesson. Okay, so the second lesson that I learned is to speak from day one. Now, this probably isn't possible for you if you're watching this video in English. Obviously, you have already been studying for some time, but basically this is speak as soon as you possibly can start speaking. Don't get so caught up on having to perfect your grammar or having to study a little bit more, learn more vocabulary before you can start speaking. Even if you are still a beginner, you can start speaking right now. That's right, you don't need to be at an advanced level already to start speaking. Even if you are more basic, you can have simple conversations with people. And something that I found really useful in my language learning, where I do like to start speaking as early as possible, is to create a script in that language. Like, what is the typical first conversation that would I, I would have when I meet someone? And I actually write that out and then translate it to the language, either you know having help from my teacher or just using Google Translate at worst. And then, really practicing that over and over again, even recording yourself or filming yourself. And then when you go to speak with someone, be it a teacher or be it a language partner, you've already practiced this, so you're good to go. And you probably can also practice what would be some common responses that person would give you. So you can learn different questions to ask and then you know what would people typically say to this. Take this as an opportunity to step outside of your comfort zone, to do something that you're really not very comfortable with, because this is really going to help you to grow not only as an English learner and speaker, but also as a person. 
Trust me, I am both shy and an introvert. And so going to any sort of social event for me is usually pretty uncomfortable if I don't know people. But learning different languages has given me a lot of opportunities because I wanted to improve my speaking. I had to do these things. So I highly recommend that you give this a try because the benefits are just endless. I know now you might be thinking, but Ethan, I don't have anyone to speak with. I don't live in an English speaking country. I don't have money to travel. Be that as it may, you have no excuses to start speaking because we have talked to so many learners from around the world and we hear this all the time that people feel like there's plenty of opportunities to improve their listening, to improve their grammar, to read books, but that they really don't have enough opportunities to speak. And so we decided to solve that. So even if you don't have money to afford a teacher or you don't have the time to go live in another country, you can start practicing your English right now at a touch of a button with the Real Life app. So anytime, anywhere, you can have a conversation with another English speaker in another part of the world and discover other cultures. You can speak to someone about your hobbies. You can talk to someone about something that you recently saw in the news. Or if you prefer, you can just talk about the weather. So why don't you give it a try right now? You have nothing to lose, it's absolutely free. Just click up here or down in the description below to download it, or you can search for Real Life English in the Apple app or Google Play Store. All right, now let's move on to the next lesson. So lesson number three, don't be too dependent on your eyes. Now, the reason I say this is because almost all schools really hammer into us when we're learning a foreign language, a dependency on reading. And the reason they do this is basically convenience. It can be difficult to teach a whole room full of kids. Maybe the teacher doesn't even have that great of a level of English themselves. And so this is what can be done to teach English to the masses. But the problem with this is that, you know, when we come out of school and into the real world, we really aren't used to hearing English as it's spoken. We just have read it so much that we really filter it through our first tongue. This can cause first language interference, which is when you're letting your native tongue influence the language that you're learning. So this might be pronouncing something like you would pronounce it in your native language instead of how it is actually supposed to be pronounced. It can also cause fossilized mistakes, which often happens because we've made a mistake so many times we're just so used to it that we don't even realize that it's wrong anymore. But even if you have had a highly reading dependent learning habits up until now, it's not too late. I had a guest on Beyond Borders who really is an expert in learning with your ears. So let's hear what he has to say about this topic. Why do people study language through reading and writing? Because that's where the light is. That's where they feel comfortable. That's where you can very precisely see the letters and have that kind of measure of certainty. Um, but what you and I are doing right now, we're not looking at any letters, right? What you and I are doing is removing our mouths, generating sound effects with it, perceiving those sound effects with our ears, and then going back and forth in rapid time. There's no visual processing really going on um, of letters, I'm, though I am looking at your face in this case, which is also very important, and we teach that as well. Um, so the point is that you just have to look at what conversation is. So I'm sure you want to avoid people not being able to understand you when you speak English. So start depending a bit more on your ears, really try to listen in to the individual sounds instead of trying to say things like in your native language. There are tons of resources which are beyond this video, but a good place to start might be that interview with Adauza. So next, natives don't just speak too fast. Often when we're learning another language, we think that people in that language are just speaking so fast. Now, in the case of English, this is actually caused in most cases by what's called connected speech. This is how we cut and connect our words. Once I discovered this in my English teaching, I could never hear English the same. So the reason why you perceive it as being really fast is because you're not used to the melody, to the tempo, to the rhythm, to all these little differences in the music of the language that you don't have in your native language. So basically you just panic and it just sounds way too fast, everything mashes together. But you don't need to fear, you know, if you're not understanding anything outside of teacher English. You can start to practice listening to this and understand it much better. Now, if you're more of an intermediate learner, then you can just start trying to focus in on not understanding 100%, but really what's the main message of what's being said. It's okay if you only catch like 40, 50, or 60% of it. 
You can try this while watching a TV series. You know, you can watch it first without the subtitles and then you can watch it with subtitles or watch it in your native language to get the full meaning and then go back again to watching it in English without subtitles to see what you catch the second time. If you're more advanced on their hand, you're gonna to wanna to start really trying to hone in on the details, you know, learning about the connected speech. And then when you watch something, you listen to something, trying to catch examples of this. And of course, if you're in a conversation with a native or someone who speaks the language really fluently, you can always ask them to slow down or to repeat or to say a certain word again if you didn't catch it. You should not be ashamed of asking for a little bit of help when you need it. So maybe at some point you've seen this image that shows us that everything that we want is on the outside of our comfort zone. And in my experience, this really is true. The people who are most willing to make themselves uncomfortable to do things that they wouldn't normally do are the ones who tend to see the most growth. So really what you wanna focus on is getting 1% better every day. And the more advanced you get in the language, the really the more difficult it's going to be to make these small improvements. When you're in the beginning, it's really exciting because you're able to learn things so fast. But as you get better and you get a better base, you really have to search for the things that you need to iron out the mistakes that you're making. So if you're like me, that you're shy or introverted, then you probably have a voice that comes up when you say like, let me go use the real life app and practice my English there, or let me go to a language exchange in my city that's telling you, no, I should do it next weekend because you know, you'll know you think of any sort of excuse to get out of it, right? Because just thinking of yourself in that position just sounds so uncomfortable. But just do it now, just push yourself. Even if it's just five minutes, it can make all the difference. And usually when you just get started, it's usually the most resistance is right before we get started doing something. So as soon as you just sit down for a couple minutes to do it, then it gets a lot easier. And you can even break this into micro habits if you're finding that you're having trouble committing to something bigger. So you might not wanna tell yourself, I need to sit down every day and study for 30 minutes or an hour. You might wanna say, I'm going to study for just five minutes. Just five minutes, just sit down, open my grammar book and do some exercises. And the great thing that happens is when you do this, it's so small that you can't not do it, right? But then once you do it, you find that you really get on a roll with it. So you don't wanna stop after the five minutes. Now, if you've ever failed in the past, I highly recommend that you give this a try. So I'd have to say that every successful English learner or other language learner that I have met has a strong burning why for why they want to learn that language. And the reason why this is so important is because if your whys, your purpose for learning is just coming externally, like your parents are telling you you have to learn it or you have to learn it because you want to get a better job or whatever the case is, that's not going to be very motivating for you. So you need to actually deliberately seek out an internal why for learning the language. So there's an exercise I used to make every single one of my new students do on the first day of class. So it's called the five whys. And the reason why it's called this is because the first thing I would have them do is ask themselves this question, why are you learning English? Now, the first answer that you give to that question is almost never any good. It's usually something very external facing that doesn't really represent why you're truly learning the language, why it's important to you. So that's why you have to ask yourself why again. Why is that important? And you keep digging you know, at least five times until you get to an answer that is much more powerful for you, that excites you, that makes you want to do the difficult things that you have to do to really get to an advanced level in the language. I was always really amazed at the answers that my students would come up with. They would be something super personal and unique to them. And the next thing I would have them do is put it somewhere where they could see it every single day. So it might be a sticky note on the fridge or on the mirror. It might be actually writing it down and taking a picture of it. I had a student who actually set it as the lock screen on his phone. So every time he'd look at his phone, he would see why he's learning English. So find that place for you that will work perfectly for you to see it often so that when you have those moments that you're just like, oh, I don't wanna to have to study English again. I don't wanna to have to do the grammar exercises. I don't wanna to go to English class. You'll just look at that and you'll be like, okay, you know, I, I know why I'm doing this and you'll reconnect to that and you'll do it anyway. So something else for me that was pretty surprising is when you think about English and you think about learning English, it's usually because you want to speak to Americans or you want to speak to Brits, right? But the thing that's really different about learning English as a language is that English is the global language. So it opens up the entire world to you. So 
As an English learner, this is really important because you don't need to just focus on being understood by Americans or Brits. You need to focus on being able to understand anyone and be understood by anyone. So if you're an advanced speaker of English, then it's really important that you work on your adaptability. So it's absolutely fine if you like English media from the US or from the UK, if you want to work on your pronunciation, if you want to have a near native accent, if you want to learn the connected speech so that you sound more natural, if you even want to use the slang that you hear in your favorite music and TV series, that's all great. But make sure that you're also able to change when you're in a situation where you're speaking with someone who might not have that awareness of American or British culture, who might not have uh, the understanding that you do of connected speech. You need to be able to change your pronunciation and vocabulary that you're using in those contexts. So we touched on this a little bit earlier, but small habits are so crucial. The learners who I've seen who are the most successful are able to fit these in around all different parts of their day, even if they are super busy. So this could be that you are preparing your breakfast in the morning and you're listening to the news in English. And then while you sit down to eat your breakfast, you are reading some tweets in English, or maybe you do a few quick grammar exercises. While you're waiting for the bus, you're WhatsApping a friend that you have in another country in English. And then on the bus on your way to work, you're listening listening to a podcast. As you can see, when you start to get creative here, you can fill up almost your entire day with different little touch points with the English language, even if your job's not in English, even if you don't live in an English speaking country. So you really have no excuses. And this part really is the place where you can have that imagination and have a lot of fun with it. And this can also be a great excuse to try things that you've always wanted to, but you never have. In fact, in this recent lesson that we did, I give you 10 different ideas of things that you can do to have small wins in English. Why don't you check it out by clicking up here or down the description below after you finish this lesson. So deliberate practice is especially important when you get to that upper intermediate stage and you feel like you're not really advancing. And this is where you need to really sit down and iron out the mistakes that you're making most commonly. So this could be doing drills. I had a guest on Beyond Borders, Anna, who has exceptional English, and she found that this was really important. Watch a video or listen to a podcast and I would just shadow. Repeat and shadow. So my first and, and always go-to things are, and this is something that I always uh, recommend to people do, um, is to listen. Listen as much as possible. Like Try to mm -hmm. immerse yourself in the language. Podcasts, audiobooks, uh, YouTube videos, movies, like whatever, and for as much as you can. Um, and then shadow, shadowing or just repeating what you hear. This will help you so much with your speaking skills, with confidence, with vocabulary even. And especially when you're at this stage, there's a lot of fun things that you can do, but you also have to accept that the process is not always going to be fun. In fact, another guest that I had, Leo, talks about this concept of no pain, no gain. Let's check it out. It's not always going to be fun. When you're exercising, you give the example of going to the gym, a person who wants to get a six pack, it's going to be a lot of pain. I, I mean, I don't want to go back to the old cliche, but it's true. No pain, no gain. If you don't go through the, if you don't go through those moments of boredom, of, of tedious repetition, the menial work, if you don't go through that, you're not going to be able to learn the language you have. Finally, it's crucial that we all recognize that it is not a destination, it's a journey. So it's really important that we enjoy the process, that we're able to stop and smell the roses from time to time. Sometimes maybe you'll fall down, you just need to dust yourself off, get back up and try again. Reconnect with your why maybe. If you haven't done that exercise yet, definitely do it because it's going to help you in those moments really important that you don't compare yourself to others. We're all on our own journey. We all learn at different paces. We all have different goals of what we need to use the language with. Maybe that person who speaks English practically like a native, you don't actually need to be at that level for the purposes that you need it for. So really sitting down and determining, you know, what is it that you need the language for so that you can have the right goals. And remembering that if it's important to you, you will probably be learning English for your entire life. You're never gonna be perfect. I'm a native speaker, I'm not perfect. There's still new things for me to learn in this language. So let's learn it together. Thanks so much for joining me in today's video. If you enjoyed it and you want more content like this, be sure to subscribe and join our community. 
And I'm really curious, which one of the lessons that I gave you today did you find the most useful? Or what's been the most crucial lesson that you've learned on your own journey? Why don't you share it with me and other learners down in the comments below. So I hope that today's lesson has given you some sort of tip that you can use to improve your English and maybe even your life. And if you liked this lesson that I know you're going to love this other one where I give you 24 tips from 24 amazing English teachers and experts from around the world on how you can take your English to the next level in 2022. Let's check it out. We all know that speaking another language is not something that you can do overnight. It requires hard work and dedication, but that doesn't mean that it needs to be something boring or painful. You can make language learning a simple and fun adventure. Today, you are in for a treat because you're going to hear from 24 amazing experts, teachers, and language learners. They're going to help you with the biggest challenges you may face or have been facing to take your English to the next level. 